In this presentation, we are going to talk about finite element analysis, loads within finite element analysis, and specifically we're going to examine the use of subcases within Inventor Nastran. And as we go along talking about the setup and applying these loads, we'll also explore some of the reasons why we might want to do this, and I'll show you an example of some different types of loads as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in Inventor, and you can see that we have our subassembly that we've been working with. And in this particular case, we're going to say that we want to work with this central arm subassembly. So if I go over into the Inventor Nastran environment, you can see that I have the subassembly there. And since we're focused in this particular case on setting up the loads and the use of subcases, I've already set it up to a degree, and that is I've meshed it. I've defined contact between the various parts, and I've added some constraints. So if we look at the menu tree here, you can see that I have rear pin constraints, and that would be in the cylindrical surfaces in the back of the arm here. And basically, I'm just allowing tangential motion. And then I have center pin constraints, which would be inside this hole on this surface. And I've done the same type of constraint there, where I'm only allowing tangential, but have fixed the axial and radial directions. So let's focus on the loads, and our loads are going to be at this end of the model. And talking about subcases, let's envision that somebody has informed us that we need to take a look at a bearing load. So in these cylindrical surfaces here, we're going to say that we have some sort of load, say in the minus y direction of a certain magnitude. And we need to examine that. What are our stresses, our displacements as a result of that? And then we're also going to study for the case of maybe something bumps it, so we have a horizontally applied force as well. So let's go ahead and start to set that up. From my loads, I'm going to go to the Setup panel, Access Loads. And the first type of load that I'm going to do is a bearing load. So I'm going to change the type of load, and as I go to the pull-down menu, you can see that we have lots of different types of loads that we can choose from, and it's going to be a bearing load. Now the next thing that I need to do is select my entities, and you can see as I hover over this box here, it tells me that I can select edges and faces, surfaces, and vertices. What I sometimes like to do is right click in this box if I know that I just want to select faces, so that way when I hover over the model it's not toggling between selecting edges and vertices and, and surfaces, it's just going to isolate down to those specific items. So let me go ahead and select the four surfaces where we're going to apply our bearing lobe. And as I select them, I can see that they've been added into my selection box. Now, the next thing is the magnitude and direction. And in this case, we're going to make it minus 44,480 newtons, which is roughly equivalent to uh, 10,000 pounds. And one other thing that I want to mention about this is with certain types of loads, whenever we define the magnitude of the load and we have multiple entities selected, such as in this case, we need to make the program aware, is that magnitude of load per surface or is that the total load and we want it distributed amongst the selected items? Well, if I'm saying that this load is per entity, then there's nothing else I need to do. But if I want that to be a total, which I do in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the total bearing load. So that 44,480, I'm saying is the total or complete load that it will experience, and it needs to be divided up amongst the selected surfaces. Now, as a good practice or best practice before I close this dialog, the other thing I'm going to do is assign a name to it. So let me go ahead and define it as bearing load, and we'll say OK. Now, having done that, when we look at the menu tree over on the left-hand side, we can see that the load is there and it has a name. So that way, when I come back sometime later to this model, uh, it's very easy to figure out why these different loads are on there. And if I need to edit one, I can quickly find the right type of load, just like I did with my constraints. OK, the other thing that we're going to do is assign our horizontal force. So I'm going to do that on this surface right here. Let's access loads, and this will be a force. My selected entity will be that surface. And this is going to be a horizontal, so that would be the Z direction. We're going to make that 4,480, or 
4,448, so that it's roughly about a thousand pounds. And we're going to assign a name to that. We'll call that horizontal. Load. Okay. So now I have both of these loads within this subcase, and I've already renamed the subcase, and that was just right clicking and choosing rename, as opposed to subcase one. Now it says total load. So I know that this particular subcase is going to be the total loads on my geometry, the bearing loads plus the horizontal loads. What we're focused on, again, is subcases and why we might want to have different subcases. So in a scenario like this, we might run the analysis and somebody says, well, yeah, I can see the displacement, I see the stress, but what is the contribution of just the bearing load or just the horizontal load? And I don't necessarily want to have to go and rerun the analysis again. So if I know that that question is going to come up, somebody says we need to see what the contributions of each one of these loads are in addition to the total, all the loads applied at the same time, then you know that you need to have different subcases. So that would be one reason to do it. And that would be our hypothetical for this case. And the other instance that you might need to utilize it is in some cases, like in aerospace industry, this comes up a lot, also in automotive, um, we might have a surface where we need to look at both positive and negative direction loads. So you could imagine if I need to select this surface here and I need to have Y direction forces and also minus Y direction forces, if I apply them in the exact same subcase, they're going to cancel each other out or one's going to uh, negate the other to a, a certain degree depending on what the magnitude of those loads are. So in those cases, you're going to also put them into different subcases. But again, in this case, we're going to hypothetically say we want to know the total plus we also want to see them independently. So to create the new subcase, I simply right click on that subcase and I can say duplicate. And when I do that, you can see that it makes a copy of everything. So it's copied the bearing load, the horizontal load, as well as my constraints. And what I can do then is just rename it like I did before. Now you can see how to rename it. And let's say that we call this bearing load and since this is the bearing load one, I'll right click on the horizontal load and I'll just remove it from this particular subcase. So now I have this second subcase, which will just be the bearing load. And I'm going to do that process one more time. Duplicate. There's my copy. I'm going to rename this one to horizontal loading. And you might want to make it horizontal load subcase or uh, subcase three, horizontal load, whatever makes sense to you. So you know what the different subcases are. And then I can remove the bearing load from this one. So there we go. There are my three different subcases. And now I don't have to set up three completely separate analyses. When I press the run button to analyze this, it will just set up the problem one time and then multiply by these different loads or solve for these different loads and I'll be able to review them all within the uh, results environment from my one single analysis that I had the program run. So hopefully that makes sense and it looks like something that will be useful.